So many moons ago, and by many moons I mean a couple years, when I first started this channel, my favorite terminal emulator was Termite. And I would have gone to battle for that terminal emulator. That thing was amazing. It was my absolute favorite. And it was just one of those things where I would not even hear of switching away from it. I made videos about it. I like made probably four videos about it. How amazing Termite was. And then Termite died. So what's it got to do? Your favorite terminal emulator dies and you have to find something different. Now, Termite is actually still around. It's just not being developed anymore. So I could have theoretically still used it. But using a project that is just not being developed anymore doesn't make a lot of sense to me when I'm doing what I do. So I had to find something different. And at the time, I made a video how I was going to switch to Alacrity. And I was very hesitant about Alacrity because I thought that it was overhyped. Like every Linux YouTuber and their mother uses Alacrity. Like it's not even funny. Every single one of them use Alacrity. A few of them use Kitty, but the vast majority of them use Alacrity. And I just thought it was like a meme. You know what I mean? Like everybody at one point was using i3 and then it moved to BSPWM and then it was DWM and then the new thing now is Hyperland. You know, there's like a scenario in the Linux community where everyone just starts using the same stuff until it literally becomes a meme, and then they move on to the next one. And I thought that that was Alacrity. So I was very hesitant to switch to it because I don't really care to use something that just happens to be popular because it's a meme. At the end of the day, however, I did end up switching to Alacrity, and I've been using it now for a couple years. And the thing is, is that two years has just flown by and I was thinking about it today I haven't had the interest in switching away from Alacrity ever like even though I switched to it in protest once I switched to it I had no interest and I still have no interest in switching away from it I've tried a couple other terminal emulators and they have been very meh they've just not been nearly as good as Alacrity is so what I thought I would do today is talk about why I think Alacrity is the absolute best terminal emulator you can try. Now, the first reason is that it allows you to change the configuration file on the fly. And what I mean by that is that if I use my Alacrity changer script, which is called LChanger, like so, I can actually choose from any number of themes that I have installed. Now, obviously, this is something that I did. This is not something that Alacrity has built in. But... It is only able to be used because of a feature that Alacrity has, and that is that it allows you to update its config while things are running. So let's just say I choose a random theme here called like Cobalt, like so. And as you can see, the theme of the terminal changed right away. I can do it again and choose a different one. Let's choose, oh, I don't know, one that's really light, like there. That one's completely different. You can see that it updated automatically. Now, like I said, that script is something that I wrote. I did make a video about that, by the way. I'll try to link that in the video description. But the point is, is that because Alacrity allows you to do this, I've been able to create a script that allows you to change between different themes. All of those themes, by the way, came from Archcraft, so I can't actually take credit from for those themes. Some of them are mine, but the vast majority of them came from Archcraft. But the point is, is that I have all these themes and I can just change between them. It also has, has allowed me to create my i3 script that lets me change both my i3, polybar, and a few other things all with a script. So let me show you that. So here are all my i3 themes. I can choose between any of these. Let's choose, oh, I don't know. How about adaptive? This one here is a Archcraft theme that I've translated into an i3 theme. And it looks like this. And as you can see, Alacrity changed right along with it because that's something that I was able to do through a script. So I think that that is probably the absolute number one reason why I like Alacrity, but it's not the only one. If you take a look at the Alacrity configuration file, you'll see the probably the only thing about Alacrity that I don't like, and that is that it's configured in YAML. And YAML is a syntax that I just don't care for at all, and I don't actually know anybody who does like it, to be honest with you. And the reason why it's so bad is simply because it requires you to be very consistent on spacing. So if you start out the file with two spaces or one tab or whatever it is, you have to kind of have all that stuff in line exactly the same, otherwise you're gonna get an error. So that's the reason why I don't like YAML. But outside of that, 
the configurability of Alacrity is amazing. So one of the things that I learned the other day that you can do is you can use the import function to import other files. So this would be similar to doing something in like Polybar or the i3 file where you include a file which basically imports it into this file. And this again has allowed me to create all those themes and kind of change them on the go. And you could do other things as well. And, and it allows you to clean up your configuration file as well. So that's another reason why it's really cool. But outside of that, the rest of the configuration file is very well done. There's a ton of options for you to choose. And there's a ton of things that you can alter if you want, including key bindings, the padding, all that kind of stuff. Now, that's not necessarily unusual for a terminal, but it's all right here. They also have really good documentation. So if you go to their website, you'll see that they have a really nice set of documentation there for you to use and their default configuration file comes with a lot of the stuff that you'll just want out of the box i've deleted most of the stuff because i don't care of about creating custom key bindings or anything like that i don't usually use any key bindings out inside the terminal so i'm not that big of a fan of the key bindings but you can alter them and all that stuff is there by default and you can just kind of see how they do it now another thing that is really cool about alacrity and it's not unique to Alacrity, but it's definitely the first experience I had with this functionality, and that is the ability to set a custom class. So if we actually open up the man page here, we'll be able to see that there's an option here called dash dash class. And basically what that does, it allows you to, for example, create a key binding that would open up a terminal that has a specific class. So, so for example, if I go into my i3 configuration file, like so, you'll see that there's a spot here where I do something like this. Now, ignore this part here. That's just telling it to check to see if there's something opening and close it. But the, the part that I'm talking about is right here. And basically what this does is it allows me to open up a terminal that has that class. So, this is really helpful when it comes to something like scratch pads, where I want to open up a terminal using a certain key binding associated with a class of terminal that is running an application. So for example, Ranger, I can do super C and that would bring up Ranger in a scratch pad. And that's really only possible because of the ability to assign this terminal a class called Ranger. And it doesn't mean that I can't open up Ranger somewhere else. I can still do that. But that would still have the class of Alacrity, which is the main class of the terminal. But this also allows me to do things like open up my music player, just like so, with a scratch pad. This, this terminal here has a class of NCMPCPP. Actually, I'm sure that's not right. I would have never used the name. It's M M U S. That's better. <laughs> There's no way I was actually going to use the name, but the point is, is that the, I was able to assign that class, and that means that I can use a dedicated key binding to just bring up that class instead of bringing up a terminal and then having to open up the music player or whatever it happens to be. Again, it's not necessarily unique to Alacrity, but it was my first exposure to that type of functionality. And it's amazing, because especially if you are the type to do things like I do with scratch pads, or you want to assign key bindings to a certain window, being able to assign a class specifically for that window is really nice. So add on top of all of those features, Alacrity is also astonishingly fast. One of the things that I thought would be a problem would be that it would be slower than Termite was, because Termite was a very fast terminal emulator, and I was very used to it running all of my commands very quickly. Now, I don't do anything complex in the terminal that really require something that is GPU accelerated, but I was still quite worried that Alacrity would take away the speed that I was kind of used to. But because it is GPU accelerated and it's written in Rust, it hasn't slowed me down at all. It's still very, very fast. It's also been very stable. And because it's so customizable, it's one of those things that just hasn't really tempted me to use anything different. Now, when it comes to alternatives that I've tried, I've tried Kitty. And Kitty, I think, is probably like the main competitor in this space in terms of like customizable terminal emulators. Now, there are obviously other ones out there that are more GUI centric, like XFC4 Terminal and GNOME Terminal and Terminator and stuff like that. Those things are all a little bit different in that you configure them through a graphical interface. For terminals where you, you do all your configuration in a configuration file, Kitty is the other big one in the space. And I've tried it. 
and I don't like it. And one of the reasons why I don't like it is because their default configuration file has all of their documentation in it, like all like 3000 lines of it. And it's so hard to parse, especially if you have folds enabled in Vim. So, so if you view the kitty configuration file in Vim with folds enabled, all their stuff is folded. And if you don't know what a fold is in Vim, I don't blame you because I didn't either. When I first saw the kitty configuration file and saw all that stuff compact into just lines of stuff, I had no clue what it was or how to unfold it. Like, so if you've ever used Vim before, you probably have come across the fold before. And unless you have used folds in the past, you probably have no clue what the default keybinding is to unfold something. I still don't know what it is. I had to look it up every single time. Now, if you view the configuration file outside of them, like you view it in Nano or Micro or something like that, you're not going to have to deal with folds. And I've come across situations where it opens up in Vim just fine if you don't have folds enabled. So that was one of the things that imme immediately turned me off from it. And then add on top of that all the documentation that is there. Now, I'm all for great documentation. I seriously think that it's one of the most essential pieces of any project. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it maybe is the most essential part of any project. If you are writing a complex piece of software and you don't have good documentation, it's not a very good project. That being said, of course, I don't think that it should all be shoved into a configuration file. Now, maybe they've changed this since the last time I used it and they've moved it to the man page and that's where it should be. But when I tried it, all of the documentation was right there. And what that does is it makes it hard to see the actual settings. So each setting had the full explanation of what that setting was right on top of it. And it kind of all blended together. And that just made it kind of hard to configure. Now, I'm not here to bash Kitty. Kitty is actually a fairly fine terminal. It's just not Alacrity. Despite my problems with the Alacrity config in terms of it being written in YAML, I still find a superior configuration file to Kitty simply because it's simpler. It just is the configuration file. If you want the documentation, you go find the documentation. And I highly recommend you do go find the documentation. It will show you all the neat things that Alacrity can do. But they don't cram it all into to the config file, and if they did, it would make it a worse configuration file. Now, all that being said, Kitty does have some things going for it that Alacrity doesn't. Kitty has things that can be plugged into it. I'm not sure what they call them. I I don't know why I think they call them kittens. Do they call them kittens? I might have to. I might be just making that up. But they call them something like that, and you can pl use them as a kind of a plugin system to make your terminal emulator do things. Some of them will help you with productivity. Some of them are just kind of frivolous things, uh, and that's a great system to have. Alacrity, as far as I know, does not have a plugin system at all. I've never really looked for one. I don't think it does, but the point is is that you know it doesn't have all that stuff on it so if you're looking for more of an extensible terminal emulator maybe kitty is a better option for you but if you're just looking for one that is stable and very configurable out of the box and has a live updating feature which is again i can't even begin to tell you how amazing that part is then alacrity is definitely the terminal for you i think it is the absolute best out there and i've tried most of them so if you have thoughts on Alacrity, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. I really do appreciate all the stuff you guys leave down there. I do enjoy our conversations. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description, along with all my other social media stuff. If you would be kind enough to hit that like button, it really would help the channel. I do appreciate that as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so because I release Linux content pretty much every single day of the week. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, some of it's worse than bad some of it's better than good it really varies you know depends on what the topic is sometimes you know <laughs> i have a bad day but anyways if you haven't hit the subscribe button you should definitely do so you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linux cast and if you are interested in doing that i now offer an annual subscription that you can select upon checkout and that'll allow you to save 10 percent. but thanks everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube i truly do appreciate it thanks to you guys so damn much Without you, the channel just would not be the way it is. So thank you for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.